And um, so we, the, the, obviously the purpose of what this uh, webinar is to go over with you what the plans are for this summer, uh, what we'll be doing in our trainer and consultancy certification course, and, um, and also how we're going to be doing it in this new and special year. Uh, we've been waiting to do this program for <laughs> literally for years. It's been several years. Sure. So um, yeah, thank you. We're, I think I am spotlighted now. So, um, so the, what my plan is I'd like to go over with you uh, what we do in the program, then how we're going to do it. And then we'll obviously have some time for questions. We also have several of our NLPU trainers and several of our NLPU resource team members here. And of course, we have Teresa Epstein, who is our NLPU coordinator. Uh, so we can answer questions for you. There's Teresa. <laughs> and uh, so we can answer questions for you. So I think uh, to, since we do have a fairly limited time and uh, just one other thing, uh, one of the announcements said this was a 90 minute session, but it's actually 45 minutes. Although uh, Totum and it was said that she's willing to stay a little later and answer questions if, if there are more questions after that time. But we are planning to wrap up in about uh, just about 45 minutes. So I would like to kind of dive into the, the program uh, and uh, share a little bit with you about this. You know, I was realizing that our trainer training, we started doing trainer trainings up at uh, University of California at Santa Cruz before we were NLP University, back when we were Dynamic Learning Center. And Teresa, I think we did the first one in either 1987 or for sure 1988, if it wasn't 1987. So that's a long time ago. And it's kind of been one of our flagship programs. And it's something that we're really proud of. Uh, it's something that uh, I think has been uh, a uh, something that sets us as NLPU uh, apart from others, not you know, just a, that it's one of our commitments to really do a very high level, high class uh, trainer training. Now, also, as we'll see, it's not only what we call a trainer training, it's also what we call a trainer and consultancy skills. And I'll explain a little bit about why we include both here, but they're both really important for somebody who really wants to make their, take a next step in their career as an NLP professional. Uh, so it, this, you know, becoming an NLP trainer is probably one of the, the most important and the biggest steps that you can make uh, as a, as an NLP professional. So I'm gonna share some slides for a few minutes and uh, kind of go over what we kind of cover in the program. Then we'll look a little bit at how we do it and then how we're gonna be doing it in our unique way this year. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just begin now and share my screen. So, um, so first of all, it's, as we said, it's an NLPU uh, trainer and consultancy certification program. The dates are this August uh, 4th to 16th at the University of California at Santa Cruz, which I'm sure that you all know is where the, it's the birthplace of NLP. Uh, so it's uh, one of the kind of significant, it's a little bit like, a little bit like going to Mecca in a way, <laughs> if you will. Um, and so, so what do we do? Um, our, uh, you know, this program is organized around what we would call an NLP, the, the tote model. And first thing is, you know, so we would say, well, what, it, what is a trainer? Uh, what does a trainer do? If you look in the dictionary, it says it's an activity leading to skilled behavior. Now, I think that's important. So it's an activity leading to skilled behavior, not just to you know, it, you know, be interested in something, not just to learn about it, but to actually be skilled. Um, another definition is to teach by form, to sorry, to teach and form by practice to educate, exercise, discipline, and all of these are things that we do in our program. And as we say, we're kind of organizing it around what we call this training 
tote where there's a feedback loop where there's we're, we're testing and then you you operate you do things until you reach a level of skill a level of performance and so when if we think about training one of the things that we do as as trainers is we're you know as from an nlp perspective is we're working with the human nervous system and so you know our inputs are our presentation so we'll make a presentation and that presentation is we, we kind of want to make sure that it somehow gets represented as cognitive maps and we would say the difference between simply a, a presenter and a teacher is that a presenter you know you, you give the information and people take what they take that's it if you're a teacher you really want to make sure that people understand it that they actually are able to create a mental map of it and so this is one of the things we're doing we work on presentation but also on what does it take to make sure that somebody really has a good understanding but really for training it's not only the cognitive understanding it's getting the experiences the practice uh, the exercise that allows people to actually do so the difference between a presenter and a teacher is a presenter presents and people get what they get a teacher has to make sure that people have understood something but a trainer has to make sure that people can do something. And that's what an NLP trainer does. We make sure that people can do these basic NLP activities. Now, if we look at what we would call the sort of different stages of learning, you know, you have knowing something. So this idea of, of consciousness uh, and some things, some things we learn by discovery, they're, they're implicit. Other things we learn by direct communication, they're explicit. But on the other side, we have doing and competency. And so some people, you know, they're, they're naive or they're beginning and then you become experienced. So now if we think about, well, what is the purpose of learning and training? Um, we wanna get people who often start at this place of, of unconscious incompetence. That means they don't know about NLP. They don't know what NLP is. They don't know what they don't know. Uh, and we want to help them to become both kind of on the one hand, you're helping people learn things where they, they become aware of it, but they're not yet competent. Other times you're helping people learn to do things, but they're not yet quite sure of what they're doing. And so a goal of, of training is to be able to do what you know and to know what you're doing. And that's where conscious competence and mastery comes in. So we design our program to be able to cover all of these things to help individuals really master NLP. And that's what you get. That's, that's how we've designed this NLPU trainer training, which we, as I was saying, when we began, we have been doing now for, for many, many years. So um, now we also say there's, this is trainer and consultancy. Why consultancy? Because a lot of us, if you are a trainer and you're doing training in NLP, whether it's with educators or whether it's a, a lot of my work has been in businesses, you're not just going to go out and do some kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, pre pre designed practitioner program. You've got to design the the program to fit the needs of your of your customer. So this is one of the other things that we're doing here is we're going to help you to learn how do you create programs? So what is consultancy? Consultancy is a bit like coaching, but you're kind of using it more from a whole group of people. And of course it starts with the present state where maybe the present state of the, the client or customers, there's some kind of confusion or, or you know, conflict and there's a desired state. And maybe that desired state is to have people be able to be coordinated and organized uh, to able to be successful, to achieve success. And what you got to do as a consultant is to create the path, what's going to help people go from that present state to the desired state. And this is where the different levels of change come in, that that path is going to involve things relating to environment, to behaviors, of course, but also to capabilities. To, to values and beliefs, to motivation, to a senses of identity, a sense of purpose. And that's often where the training comes in. So I found in my own work as a trainer, 
I had to naturally learn to become a consultant because the, you know what I was doing for my clients was designing and creating programs. But also as a consultant, I have to be a trainer because I then have to implement this path. So, uh, you know, we say that as an NLP trainer, we're working with all of these levels and this is what we're gonna be learning. We learn at NLPU, we working with the environment. How do we create a good learning context? Uh, and then of course, we're working with behaviors. We need to engage people in actions in, in you know, learn what to do, learn the steps of the processes, learn to be able to do all those basic NLP things like anchoring, like uh, using uh, the, you know, uh, an adapting language. But to do that, you've got to develop some of the mental maps and that's where, that's where teaching really becomes an important part of it. In order to do what I have to do, I have to know how to do it. So this is where we're engaging the mind and, and learning strategies. And as a trainer, we're teaching these strategies. But then, and I think this is significant and it's something that we really emphasize at our NLPU programs, but certainly in our trainer training, on, you know, on the one hand, we you would focus practitioner level NLP is at these basic levels, the how, the what, the where and the when. But to really master something, we also need the motivation. And for us, we think that it's important that as trainers of NLP and consultants in NLP, we are working with the, the, the values and the beliefs that we're able to engage, not just the mind, but also the heart, the, the motivation. Uh, so we also do work with, okay, if as a trainer, there are certain types of beliefs and values that I need to be able to have myself, but also impart to others. Now, then there's also the notion, and this is a key part of our program, is that being a trainer is not just a set of competences. It's actually an identity in, in the sense that it's a role and it's a mission. And so a lot of what we also are, work with at our NLPU trainer training and consultancy training is really developing the identity of a world-class trainer. Uh, what's that role? What's that mission? And then of course, beyond that, we have the whole notion of, of purpose. What is the bigger vision that you would have? What, why to be a trainer? For what, for whom? And so you see, we're really looking at a whole uh, inclusive range of you know, trainer and consultancy competences. Now, Again, we, we tend to say these upper levels are also focused at master practitioner, but all of these are what we need to be able to, to work with as a trainer. And so when we support people also as a trainer to develop those skills, we, we learn to be guides. A lot of times when we were doing practitioner, you're guiding somebody through a process. Uh, but to really make sure that somebody's gotten it on a behavior level, we have to also become coaches. So what we would say is a good trainer is, is a guide. The trainer is also a coach. Clearly a trainer has to be a teacher, but a trainer also needs to be what we would call a mentor because mentors are ones that help people to develop their own sense of motivation, self-motivation, their own sense of ethics. Uh, so, now, again, key is we're also, as trainers, wanting to develop people. At NLPU, we consider that training is not just about skill development, it's about people development. And so it's what we call sponsoring, which is to really support somebody in their, to, to really integrate their own role and their own mission. And another level is what we call awakening, is awakening to a bigger sense of purpose, to our place in what we do in the world. And, and this is what I think why so many people that have been through our NLPU courses and especially our NLPU trainer training will basically call it a life-changing experience. Yes, you will come and you learn all of those skills. You, it's very practical and it's life-changing. Uh, and I think when you do truly step into that place of an NLP trainer, you know 
this is now uh, you know a, a new stage of my of my not only my profession but my life. So, what do we do? Uh, what are some of the the basic things that we're doing? We're looking at some of these fundamental components of an NLP NLP based training program. You know, now I've worked in a lot of companies and organizations, and I've also worked with trainers who are not NLP trainers. And I really began to see what makes an NLP trainer different than, than regular trainers. Uh, and this has to do with this really strong emphasis on performance and skill development. So when, when you, if you think about what we do as a trainer, when, what, if you think about, for those of you who are practitioners, master practitioners looking to be a trainer, you think about your best courses, your best days in your courses, there's always some kind of a setup. There's an introduction, you know, we're, we're setting up, this is what we're gonna be teaching. And then there's a presentation. There's some kind of presentation of the key ideas, the key steps. And then there's always, and this is one of the things that I find is really makes NLP uh, unique in, in many ways, is we're always demonstrating. You don't just talk about it, you, you demonstrate it, you show it, you've got to master it and be able to do it. We don't just talk about anchoring or talk about reframing or talk about you know, a rapport, you have to demonstrate it. And then of course, we're assigning these learning activities. So people don't just study, they're, they're practicing, they're learning. And then there is also managing as a trainer, the discussion and the reflection on what you've learned. And then of course, there's feedback and assessment. So this is one part of what we do and what we cover all these different aspects uh, at our NLPU 400, our trainer training. And you know, we would say that there's a cycle that we're always going through uh, as we are doing any kind of training. Uh, there's a planning part and planning is a key. And this is where some of the consulting skills come in. I've got to plan, what is it that I'm going to do? Then I've got to prepare myself. Then of course we do it, we reflect on it. And then there's often kind of a, a reorganizing, rearranging. So these are other things that we do. Um, in fact, just to go over, these are some of the key um, skills that we cover. There's, uh, there's, these are big categories. There's many uh, in the, if you go online and you look at the uh, list uh, in, on the NLPU website, you'll see more detail. But we go over what we call meta leadership skills. We, we say a trainer is a meta leader. What that means is, you're often leading other leaders. Uh, you're not just you know, feeding followers. You are leading other leaders. So we're connecting a, you know, a vision and a mission to a project. You're motivating, inspiring, and aligning groups towards a goal, uh, whether it's, a, it's a, you know, a practitioner group or a group that you're doing training for. And I, and I want to emphasize something here that's very important about for our NLPU trainer training, which is it's not only about somebody just kind of learning some uh, basic you know, you know, set of practitioner uh, you know, skills. It's for you as a trainer to be able to use NLP to create any kind of training. We've had people who've come to our trainer training that will then leave and create, for example, programs to help people improve eyesight programs to help people in, that are in the areas of health to deal with, uh, you know, situations like that are happening in parts of our world where there's war or trauma, uh, develop programs for young people. So it's not just how do you teach the basic practitioner? It is how do we use NLP to teach NLP and create programs that bring NLP more to others in the world. So you, you could learn what you're learning here is, in fact, we often will, will uh, recommend, we, in fact, we would go so far as to say, we're gonna require people to come with an idea for a program, a project, a training program that you would like to create. That is your program that you wanna create for a particular group or for a particular audience. So this is why we say, there's, there's this meta leadership skills. 
because it's also about designing this designing programs. Now, of course, there's going to be presentation skills. How do we set frames? How do we use universals? How do we anchor groups? How do we, we do what you call chaining responses and do future pacing with groups? How do we give and receive effective feedback? We work with co-coaching, you know, uh, a peer and self-assessment, what we call guardian angel skills too. There's obviously a lot of important relational skills that you need as a trainer that you that is, is something more than just what you do as a practitioner or a master practitioner if you're working with individuals. Uh, you need to create rapport with groups to calibrate groups. Obviously, there's a lot of self-management, building personal resource states. There's group management, pacing a group, dealing with resistance is, a, is another part of what we're working with. There's uh, conducting demonstrations and assigning exercises. There's exercise design and construction and assessment strategies. And beyond that, one of the things that we work with is we would say, how do you storyboard an entire program? So what we're really looking at here, and I, I find a lot of trainer trainings are, are essentially just presentation skills, which is great, that's important, but you need a lot more than that to really be a world-class NLP trainer. One of the reasons that NLP doesn't have the best reputation in the world these days is precisely because a lot of not world-class trainers have gone out there and done poor work. We are committed at NLPU to say, if you've come to our program, people will know you are a world-class you are a world class trainer. You have those skills. So if, if that's your ambition, then that's what this program was designed for. Now, that's what we do. I want to say a little bit about how we do that. And, and we've started to make a lot of innovations, obviously, over the past couple of years of pandemics. And I would tell you that it, you know, and Teresa will <laughs> vouch for me about this, that if you had said three years ago we could do an, uh, some kind of trainer training online, I would have said, no way, Jose. We can do practitioner, I, I think maybe mass practitioner, but trainer. Now then, of course, the pandemic happened. And of course, I was doing all my training online. So uh, I realized, of course, you can do training online. We have to do training online. It means, though, that we have to then really refine some of these skills. Uh, you can't rely on some of the same things that you do with some of these unconscious competences that you have when you're working live. So obviously, we're going to really be uh, emphasizing uh, how, we, how we do virtual training as well. And of course, what's going to be happening this year is we're going to be doing some of this program uh, people will be attending virtually and others people will be attending physically. This is called a hybrid. So there will be physical attendees and virtual attendees. Our trainers, some trainers will be there physically, some trainers will be there virtually. Uh, but both the virtual and the physical participants will get a chance to interact with both. Um, and we have designed these programs around a, uh, a notion of what's called flipping the classroom. The idea of flipping the classroom is that if you think about the traditional way that learning was done, uh, it kind of shows here on the, the top screen, this top picture, the student goes, they sit in a class, the teacher does the presentation, then they go home and they have to do the practice work by themselves with no support. You know, they, don't know, they can't ask anyone questions and you know, so they struggle. The idea of flipping the classroom is you can actually, and this is what we do, we have a presentation part of the program, the main presentations, there will be course parts that we do live, whether it's uh, virtual or uh, physical, but the main parts are going to be pre-recorded so that people can view them when at their, you know, at, at their own, uh, at their own pace and whenever they can. Then there are going to be the real-time plenary meetings. So this is where we say that, that this is the idea of the flipping the classroom so that when people get together, it's more active. They're not just sitting there listening or watching. And we have found that these that this idea of the pre-recorded classes are so much more helpful in many ways because you can review them as much as you want. You can slow them down. If something goes by and you weren't paying attention, it doesn't mean you've missed it forever. So 
Uh, this is a really important part. So during the meetings, the plenary meetings, which again will be virtual and, and physical, there's question and answer sessions, supplementary live demos, and of course, community building activities. So generally, uh, what we've done in the past, and this is be our plans, uh, some of this might uh, be adjusted as we get closer and find out what our compositions of our groups are. We generally have a 90 minute uh, morning plenary with question and answers for European uh, and Americans virtually, and a 90 minute evening plenary for people from uh, uh, Asia and Australia. And of course, then there's practice sessions. The, the people who are virtual will be doing some virtual practice sessions. Now it can also be possible, depending upon timing and where people are, that you can do, uh, and, and, and Robbie knows this because uh, we've done these, uh, and, and Judith too, we've done these in uh, uh, London where we have people uh, practicing who are live practicing with people who are virtual and people who are virtual practicing with people live. And that's something very interesting to do. Now, again, a lot of that depends on time frame and coordination. So we've got to see who else coming from which parts of the world. Generally, uh, in, in previous years, we have had people, uh, just so you know, we people who come to NLPU programs and especially a trainee training, usually we have at least 30 or more different countries. So it's a very international experience. Of course, all of the plenaries are, will be recorded and posted as well. And we will be recording also the uh, live classroom sessions as well, as well as streaming them. And so then practice sessions will, can be done on local time. Uh, and we will have, of course, we'll have our uh, resource team and our affiliates. Some will be there in person. Others will be there online. So we'll have these practice sessions that we can get to work with groups. And um, we have, we'll have a, 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 our typical dashboard uh, that everybody can use, whether you're virtual or they're physically there, everybody gets access to this dashboard where you get the readings, which the, which is a great thing about having these readings on this uh, virtual dashboard is that set up so that you can actually translate the readings into different languages using Google Translate, which interestingly, has is very good for some languages it's amazing how how well it works for some languages not so good for others we also have then these video master classes were on there uh, but we also will have transcripts of these master classes which are also available to be translated uh, we'll have all the slides uh, that will be used for the master classes and and you know again for the supplementary work those are also uh, available to be translated into through the Google Translate function. Uh, demos will be done by me or other NLPU faculty or affiliates. So that's of course, uh, some, will, some of those demos may appear on the recordings. Others, of course, that's what the flipping the classroom is about, is for us to do those demos and we do the practices. Uh, there are also quizzes and assessments on the dashboard that are again, translatable. We, uh, we have, have been blessed to have Antonio Mesa come and do some graphic facilitation for us to capture key ideas. And we usually have uh, an audio and video library, uh, which is generally in English only. But these are some of the really important uh, things that, that are available that we, that again, I think make this, uh, this, this uh, particular training training and especially this year, something that's gonna be very unique. So uh, if I'm gonna just put up, I'm gonna wrap up here and for take some questions uh, and, and also maybe some of our other trainers wanna say something, but um, obviously you can find out more about, about this at nlpu.com. You can also contact Teresa directly at teresanlpu at gmail.com. Deb Roundy, who is our, you know, uh, our uh, resource team coordinator, and, and general all round uh, resource person, uh, you can contact her at Deborah, D, sorry, D Roundy at uh, NLPU at Gmail, or she's on Facebook at Deborah.Roundy. Also, we have Toki, uh, who is an, our NLPU, is working to support Teresa as NLPU coordinator. And Toki is at Toki NLPU coordinator at gmail.com. So we've got lots of places. If you have, or if you're interested in finding out more, some more specifics, we'll be having more specifics, obviously, as 
time gets closer. So I'm gonna pause there. Um, that's kind of the, the presentation aspect of this. And I'm now, uh, of course, interested in, we're, we're all interested in if there's any questions that you might have. I, I haven't been able to look at the chat recently, but there may be some questions in the chat or you can probably, it's easiest if you have a question to use the, uh, the hand raising function, which is under, if you go under reactions and just click the raise hand, that's uh, probably the best way. And then we would we'll have you unmute yourself. Um, so, Robert, any, yes, this is Deb. Can I say something? I'm unmuted. Yes, please. Okay, please, the, yeah. the email address is just a little round wrong. It's D E. Oh. It's D Roundy at. Excuse me, D Roundy N L P. There's no U. Oh, it's not N L P U. It's D Roundy. No, I think I told you the wrong one. And if it's okay, um, I'll just say my hellos and then uh, mute myself again. Yes, thank you, Deb. Yeah, so Deborah Roundy, I'll be there, NLPU, excited. And I also do a lot beforehand. One of the things is setting up a Facebook page for anyone who wants to connect on Facebook. It's set up, and if you get hold of me, I'll get you on it. And um, other than that, I'm looking really forward to greeting you at NLPU. On Facebook, I will be sending, um, and to some emails, I'll be sending some things to let you know what's coming up, what what NOPU things are that you might not get in another um, place or how to um, get hold of different people, things like that. So, Great so you'll want to be on Facebook or give me your email. Okay, I'm I'm muting. I'm out of here. Right. I'm not out here, but I'm, <laughs> my voice is out of here. Bye. It's Love done. to all. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if either any of our trainers want to say something, if Robbie or Judith or or. or if, uh... Sure, I, I'll happily say something. Um, really, very brief. I can say that, uh, as you know, I did the course in uh, whenever it was, twenty. Oh, I'll add a spotlight for myself. It's like two, two, twenty six or something, wasn't it, Robbie? Yeah, or I twenty two thousand and six. So it was a really yeah. time ago. So obviously, it's led for a new career for me, which is good. Thanks for that, Robert. <laughs> but uh, on a more serious basis, I think that there's. I would just simply say two things. Firstly. You know, do you teach NLP or do you teach with NLP? Mm. I think the thing which I found was, you know, very detailed exercises, you know, really helped raise my game as a as a trainer um, and, you know, using anchoring and presentations and so on. So I think that's one thing. And the other thing is, yes, there is something kind of magical that happens. I mean, everyone is really committed. You know, you're pretty committed by practitioner. By master practitioner, you're completely <laughs> committed. So the people who are along there, it just opens up a whole new world. I mean, I'm traveling tomorrow to do a, a training. I would never have thought I would be doing something like that 15 years ago or whatever. So thank you, Robert, and thank you, uh, Teresa and the team. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you. I look forward to seeing some of you there. And uh, I'll just add to that. I mean, you said life-changing, Robert. I mean, it's an incredible experience. You know, it's a kind of expansion of <laughs> multiple dimensions, you know, of yourself that you get to, you know, bring out, but also you get to touch other people because you are skilled and you really know what you're doing and you're able to really see, you know, how, how it's landing with people and how they too are kind of growing and changing. It's really, I mean, profound, profound, profound part yeah. of life, I think. I'm really looking forward to it this summer. Thank you. Yeah, I think you, you made a really important point that for me, you know, like a lot of times when we, we, we learn practitioner, master practitioner, we have a lot of these unconscious competences, which are great. But as a trainer, you can't just go, well, you just kind of do it, you know, intuitively do it. You, you actually have to be able to know what you're doing and say, yeah, I just did this, 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 this. And there's something for me that's particularly empowering about that and, and to me I, it's something that I love about it which is I don't I'm, I'm not like I'm not up on my head thinking about it I'm doing it but I have that ability then to reflect back and go this is what I just did and and I know and it extends into your whole life then exactly I mean it exactly. goes it's everywhere everything you learn will be useful yeah. everywhere forever you know it's just yeah. incredible yeah thank you uh well, Robert, I was um, trying to, yeah. wanting to explain to people the difference yeah. of 
getting certified while you are here in Santa Cruz at the program, which everyone will be certified by the end of the program. But the people who are online are oh, going yes. to be Zooming for a couple more months. Yes, because the practice, and I think that's, thank you, Teresa, so that's important because what we find is that um, for people that are, can't be there, you know, that their practice is not always possible to do within that time frame, And so we extend that. And those practice sessions are, are really powerful. And I know, you know, uh, we get, we've gotten such great feedback about the practice sessions that, that Judith has done, and uh, I'm sorry, that Edith has done, also that um, Michelle has done, and Deb has done. So this is, and, and Toki has done. So we've got a, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, an opportunity and, and like just, yeah, you, you don't have to do everything by the end of that, those 12 days. Yes. Anything else from anybody else? Any or any questions? I see a hand up. Yay, we have a hand up. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Um. Hi, Robert. Um, Hi. One of my concerns, sort of like um, parts integration, is how does the experience being in Santa Cruz and doing it online compare? Um, and in terms of the end result, how does that compare? Uh, I understand the the, uh, the experience in Santa Cruz is different. Yeah. It, you, I mean, I, in one, to be, to be, first of all, completely honest with you, since we haven't done it this way before, <laughs> I can't really say exactly how it compares. But what I know is from what we've done with our practitioner and our master practitioner, when we did them just totally online, that, that the results were actually surprisingly, we had you know, very you know, positive, you know, surprising results. And I do know, you know, that um, given how much work we do and need to do virtually, that the experience, it's, it's not going to be completely the same, but it will be, I think it will be a very, probably a very positive experience, but in a slightly different way. So again, the honest answer is I can't compare them yet, uh, specifically for trainer training, because this is the first time that we've done it uh, this way. But I can, I'm pretty certain from, you know, the experience that we've had with practitioner and master practitioner that it, they're both going to be very, very valuable. And of course, there's, there's nothing like, you know, being there in, in person in a way, but it doesn't mean that you're going to, that you're going to have to take less or get less or, you know, so, so I think you will get a very, very, uh, you know, good learning experience. I would also say that while NLP University is going on in August, of course, all the people who are online wish that you were there <laughs> with us and yeah. have fun in the evenings and having meals. But when we finish in August, the online group continues on joyfully. And yeah. then all the people who were in Santa Cruz, some of them will join the online group because that community online is precious in an, in a similar way. That's right. So then we will be wanting to come with you online. And I think, honestly, that's why the online group goes on so long after the program. I don't want to stop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I see we have, thank you, thank you. We have another hand up here. Uh, and that is, let's see, can we spotlight you and spotlight? Oh, it's Jehan. There you are. Hi. Hello, hello. Thank you very much, Robert. I wish I could make it to Santa Cruz. I wish I can be in your physical presence as well and all the colleagues and team. It's been quite a couple of years doing the practitioner, the master practitioner, and now the trainer. Yes. And um, I've, I've been training for, for around eight years now, which is nothing compared to your experiences. And um, I was wondering, if I already have been a trainer for a long time, trained by Dr. John Grinder and certified by him. And now that I want to move my certification to come through the NLP university mm -hmm. as I find more alignment mm -hmm. uh, with the community, with yourself, with the community and the teachings, I was wondering when will I be able to give my students the NLP certificate 
uh, what is my process and uh, right. Right. Yeah. being a trainer taken into consideration to shorten the the, the time uh, frame and uh, I really am so grateful you're doing this online I'm grateful to COVID yeah. that I can do that online and be with my children at the same time at home and that's a blessing yeah. thank you thank you Jan that is a really important important question so let me say this so what happens as a result of this? So what does the certification uh, at the NLPU trainer training give you? You become a member of the global training and consulting community. Now, what that means is that you, we, are, we are acknowledging you as a trainer and, and that you can give your own certification. And generally the people, we, we, can't, we can't enforce this for everybody, but generally people, if somebody has given their certification, for example, if you certified somebody as a practitioner, we would accept your practitioner into our master practitioner program. If you certified somebody as a master practitioner, we would accept them into our, our trainer program. So, but, but it would be under your certification. Now, there are two other st stages uh, that people, uh, but then these, these usually require a little bit more beyond the trainer training. There's what we call authorization, which people, if they come to our master trainer, Authorization means that you can actually use the NL, all the NLPU um, materials. So a trainer certification doesn't mean you can take the manual and, and you know, take the, our materials and use it without permission. You, you'd have to get the permission. But some people, they, they, with this idea of authorization, they, they can just they take they can be authorized with our practitioner or master practitioner, and then they can just use that material however they want. There is also a farther path that we call affiliation. And I, there may, I'm not even sure there may be some of our affiliates on, I know, well, you know, Robbie and Judith have done this, where they can actually give a program like a master practitioner program that is affiliated with NLPU. And then yeah, I would that sign- That means I can put the logo and I can- yeah, uh... Exactly. And we would, we sign the certificates, Teresa and I will sign them. Uh, so. You know, then it's 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 basically we're saying this is the same as an NLPU program. Now, having just done the trainer, we don't we can't say that yet, but we can say that we believe that you will have the skill to be able to certify a practitioner. And if you say this practitioner is, has the skill, we will accept them in our uh, practice our master practitioner program. What what? Thank you very much. And what process will I need to get to the affiliation? I'm interested That's, to be. I already certify. I already certify practitioners and master practitioners. It is. It is. It is amazing that they yeah. are. Go, their trainings are recognized by the NLPU yeah. and uh, uh, to get to the so level where I am an affiliate. So generally, that's where we would we have our master trainer program, which we're planning to do next <laughs> next summer. But oh, that master goodness. trainer is where then we say we we have enough experience with that person that we know that they would give a, you know a program that would be this the same and the same quality as what we would do at NLPU. We would again that because then we're saying it's an NLPU program, not just that we're uh, you know. Uh, we, we know that you're doing a good practitioner, but it's not wouldn't be the same as saying this is an NLPU practitioner. So that's the uh, that's the path. And and if it was the trainings I provide are for Arabic speaking, so they're in yes. Arabic language, and yes. I keep the terminologies in English yes. uh, for them to know if they want to continue. Sometimes yes. I use both languages Fantastic. if I'm having yeah. multilingual people. So. Uh, uh, that will also include the um, uh, the translation to be a representative in the Arab world uh, for yeah. that. Yeah. So if we already have other? the translation, uh, if we already have the translation, we can provide that. If we, you know, otherwise we we will find some way either working with, with whoever that we can make the translation. Sorry, I didn't get that. My my my. Yeah, so we, if we already have the translation, we can provide that. For example, we have translation in many languages. If we don't have it yet, we work together with with whoever is the affiliate to make to make that happen. So thank I look you. forward I, to translate it to Arabic for you as well. If it is not, great. and thank you very much. Thank you. I know we're getting to our closing time. I see we have two more questions. If we can do that quickly. Or three. I I don't I honestly don't have too much more time myself, but let's quickly go to the next one, see if we can get them quickly. So I see that it's um yes. 
Hi. Hello, y my name is Lali. Uh, the name doesn't show here. Basically, yeah. first of all, I want to say thank you for bringing this practice to life. And I've learned history of how you developed and bring it to modern days. And thank you very much for that. I myself um, went through practitioner, masters and trainers training in Austin. Uh, huh? through training. It was an amazing experience. And at the same time, I was looking at uh, your practice and was interested, is this uh, course that is upcoming would be your last one that you will be teaching in person or there's more to come or what's the plans for future? Oh, that's a good question. And the honest answer is I don't know for sure. We, we're, uh, uh, the, I, what I can say is it's it's the one I will for sure be at, uh, and I can't really know for sure beyond that and how much I would be involved in the others. Uh, certainly part of the reason we're doing it th this way is that those master classes will be there, you know, forever. Uh, but whether I'm involved in the plenaries and how much in the plenaries is a sort of a different topic. How we continue at NLPU, of course, we we want to be... We would like to be at, at the University of California at Santa Cruz as long as we can. Uh, and we, we have our, our affiliate trainers who will be following up. So uh, again, the answer is, I, I think, I don't know, but I can, I can guarantee I will be there this year. I think that's as far as I can go. And also small answer to Alexis, he was asking about parts integration. I wanna say from my personal practice and also the way yeah. I was trained prior to that, we yeah. did practice it online and it was as good as being in person. Yeah. The results yeah. are pretty tremendous. So yeah. go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I'm gonna take wait, just quickly another one here. And this is... Hey, Hi. Um, so I'll get right to the point because I know we're short on time. Do you mind um, maybe explaining the difference between, I know you do three types of course for coaching. You got the uh, mindset map coaching certification, yeah. generative coaching certification, and you got the trainer training, which is somewhat of a coaching as well. And from somebody who is interested in the, the coaching of the business world and coaching, you know, whether it's with companies, CEOs, which would you recommend and, and maybe maybe explain the difference between the three different coaching certifications? Sure, sure. Um, so so by the way, the, because the trainer training is really like say it's trainer and consultancy, which like our, our master practitioners where we would focus more on coaching skills. And what I can say is so generative coaching is is it can it involves a little bit of NLP, but it's a very specific methodology, a six step methodology. It's, it can be used, uh, you know, for, for life coaching, uh, also professional coaching, but it's a completely different thing than what we do at the NLPU trainer training. It's, which is, I, I would say is much more geared towards somebody who wants to really, uh, not just coach an individual, but create interventions. If you think about training and consultancy, the coaching is, is typically about one-on-one, -on -one. you can coach a team. But training, you're training groups, sometimes massive groups. You might be working, a lot of the trainings that I've designed for organizations are to really create transformation in that organization. So it's really on a completely different level. And, you know, so the, and the mindset uh, coaching, mindset map coaching is specifically about how you use a particular tool uh, that maps out certain qualities of, of mindset. So they're 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 each have their definitely they each have their place but i would say if you want to be going into organizations or companies and making significant you know uh, you know change transformations the one that's most would be most relevant is the the trainer and consultancy training because that's where you're going to get those kind of skills because the coaching coaching skills are, are tend, tend to be in the both the generative coaching and the mindset coaching one-on-one -on -one and you know following specific kind of methodologies here it's kind of like we said it's really sort of more meta in a way to that so i hope i hope that helps a little bit yeah, that, that answered my question so this one in santa cruz is the one that you'd say is a more global it's, it's definitely more global awesome thank you yeah. Okay, well, everybody, I'm, uh, I'm going to need to go. <laughs> Thank you for your time. If, if uh, there are any more questions, uh, 
Toktam said that she would be willing to stay as if and, oh, and Teresa will stay. I'm gonna, uh, Toki, I'm gonna, uh, let's see. Thank you. And also I wanna say hello and welcome to Chris. Chris Hodlum is here too, so I'm just- Oh, hi, Chris. I didn't, don't see anybody. Hello, hello, hello. So um, I'm going to say good, good night to everybody. Or good, good morning, <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good night. But uh, to you. See, you, see you, and and I, I'm gonna make you the host, Toki. So you are now our host, and I will see you all. Hopefully, I'll get to see you virtually or in person in Santa Cruz this summer. Yay! Thank you. Thank you very right. much. Bye, everybody. Thank bye, you. bye for Thanks now. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. So, if anyone has a question.